Welcome to this first video in our study of business calculus. This first video is all about what's called the average rate of change. Our first goal in calculus is to look at ways to describe and analyze how a function is changing. In other words, we're going to be answering and asking questions like, how is the profit changing as the number of units made increases? Or another question very similar, how is the profit changing as we raise or lower the price of the product? Or we might be asking, how is the poverty rate affected by the rise in unemployment? When is the population increasing most rapidly? At what production level does the maximum profit occur? All of these questions can be answered using calculus. As we learn the mathematics of calculus, we'll be developing tools to answer these questions, but in this first section, we're going to start at the most basic level, and we're going to look at what's called the average rate of change. So our goals in this video are to be able to compute the average rate of change if we're given a graph or a table of data. Then we're going to also no learn to interpret the average rate of change in the context of an application problem. So can we write a sentence that describes what that average rate of change means? Let's start by looking at the profit function that I have depicted in this graph here. My red curve, this one here, is my profit function. And the profit depends on the variable t, and t this is time. So it's actually the time in years after 1990. So here is t equals 0, so that's going to represent 1990. Five years later, this is 1995. Five years after that, we're looking at the year 2000. The y-axis here, this is our profit, and each one is 1 million. So this here would be 2 million dollars. This would be four million dollars. This would be six million dollars. So let's first start by figuring out between 1995 and 2000, so we're looking at these two years, 1995 and 2000, the profit increased by how much? Okay, so if we look here, in 1995 my profit is at two million and in 2000 my profit is up here at six so the change in profit over those five years is four million dollars. Now if we want to take that four million and average it over the five years in so that we can figure out how much did the profit increase each year then what we would need to do is we would need to take our four million and divide it by our five years. And if we do that, we're going to get 0.8. So this means that between 1995 and 2000, that profit increased at an average rate of 0.8 million dollars per year. So hopefully when you look at that, you see a correlation with something that you have done a whole lot of in the past and that is finding the slope of a line. So this point right here is the point 5, 2 and this point right here is the point 10, 6 and what I did there was I took 6 minus 2, that's our change in our y value, over 10 minus 5, that's the change in our x value, so we did 6 minus 2 over 10 minus 5. That is just the slope of that line that I have drawn between those two points. So finding that average rate of change, this is just a fancy way of saying you're finding the slope of the line that connects the two points. Now the slope of that line we use that idea so frequently, we call that line something special. We call it a secant line. So when you have a curve and you have two points that are on that curve and you draw a line between those two points, that is called a secant line. What we just did was we found that average rate of change of our P between 1995 and 2000. And basically again, what we did was we took our um, two points, one of them was 5, 2, and the other one was 10, 6, and we found the slope between those two points, and we got 4 over 5, which is 0 0.8.
Okay, so let's talk about the units of our average rate of change. So our, to compute our average rate of change, you take the change in P over the change in T. So the units of that average rate of change are going to be the units of P over the units of T. So here we have million dollars and our units of our T are in years. So our units are in million dollars per year. That's another way of saying million dollars over years. So let's look at a second example where we're finding the average rate of change if we're given a table of data. So the following table shows the amount of money that companies invested in venture capital during the years 1995 to 2001. T equals 5 corresponds to 1995. So this is 1995 right here and here's our years and then our investment is in billions of dollars. So we're supposed to compute the average rate of change between 1995 and 2000. So 2000, that's five years after 1995 or 10 years after 1990. So that would be T equals 10. So these are the two points that we're going to want to use to find our average rate of change. If I wanted to, I could write those as ordered pairs. And then to find the average rate of change, I'm just calculating a slope. So I'm taking 16 minus 0 0.05 over 10 minus 5. So I end up with 15.95 over 5, which is 3.19. So let's quickly here figure out what those units are. So remember the units of our average rate of change, that's going to be the units of our M per units of our T. So it's going to be um, units of our M, so that's billion dollars per, and then the units of our T are years. Now let's write an interpretation sentence. So when we're writing an interpretation sentence, we're writing a sentence that says what that number means in the context of the this story. One really good way of writing that interpretation is to use this format that I have down here. First you say when, then you say what you're talking about, what quantity are we talking about, are we talking about um, our investment, are we talking about profit, what are we talking about. Next, whether it's increasing or decreasing, and last, by how much and include correct units. Let's write a sentence here. First, we're going to start with when. The when is between those years 1995 and 2000. So I'm going to put that on the first line here. Next, what? We're talking about the amount invested in venture capital. So if we look up here, this part of the sentence gives us what we're talking about for our what. So we would say the amount invested in venture capital. The next part of our sentence is whether it's increasing or decreasing. Since our average rate of change, which is a slope, is positive, we're talking about an increasing quantity. So we're going to say is increasing at an average rate of, okay, and then we're talking about the last part of the sentence needs to be by how much. So we're talking 3.19 billion dollars per year. So this is what our sentence should look like. So let's real quickly here, make sure that we know what each part is. So this between, that's our when. The what, that's the amount that's invested. And you get the what by looking up here at the original sentence. Increasing or decreasing, that is determined just by whether your slope is positive or negative. And then finally, by how much, that's the actual value of that average rate of change. And we've got the correct units in there. So now we're going to do another one. So this time we're supposed to compute the average rate of change between 1999 and 2001. Okay, so pause the video, compute this average rate of change over this interval and write that interpretation sentence and then unpause and see if you got the same thing I did. Good, you're back. So here the average rate of change, the calculations, first I wrote down the two ordered pairs, then I used my slope formula to find that average rate of change. This time it's negative, so that means when I write my sentence I'm going to say decreasing instead of increasing and then it's going to be negative two billion dollars per year. So let's look at our sentence. So the when that's between two, 1999 and 2001. The what is the same this time. This time we're decreasing instead of increasing. 
And notice that when I use that word decreasing, that takes care of this negative sign. So I don't need a negative in the um, by how much because I've taken care of that negative by using that word decreasing. And then finally, we have the $2 billion per year. Okay, so in this next part, we're supposed to figure out during which two-year period was the average rate of change the greatest or the least. So one thing that gets a little confusing is when you're looking at a two-year period, it's tempting to think of these two points as a two-year period. But really, if we take our difference in our t's, 6 minus 5, that's only 1. So this is not a two-year period. A two-year period is that period. So we need to use this point here and this point here for our slope. Okay, so I'm going to do this first one. So my average rate of change is going to equal 1 minus 0 0.05 over 7 minus 5. So our denominator is going to be 2, our numerator is going to be 0.95, so this is going to be 0.475. So I want you to pause the video and find the remainder of these four two-year period average rates of change and then um, play again and check to see if you had the same answers. You're back! So here I have all of my average rates of change. So let's pick the greatest and the least. So when they ask us for the greatest and the least, they're asking us to think about these slopes in terms of like a number line. So if I put all my my slopes on a number line here, the one that's the farthest to the right, that would be the greatest. So this one here would be way over here at 7, so this is going to be my greatest. Now the least one is usually a little bit harder for people. When we're asking for the least, we're asking the one for the one that's the farthest to the left. So even though this one here looks like it's the smallest number, the farthest to the left is going to be this negative 2. So this is going to be our least. So over here is negative 2. The 0 0.045 would be you know, in there somewhere. But we want the one that's the farthest to the left on our number line, so that's our least. So let's look at one more example where we're looking at average rates of change based on a graph. In this one it says the following chart shows the total annual support for the arts in the U.S. by federal, state, and local government in the years 1995 to 2003 as a function of time and years. T equals zero represents 1995 together with the regression line. The regression line, that's actually if the line that would fit the data the best. So if they put all these data points into a calculator and they found the line of best fit, that would be this red line here. So this red line, this is the line of best fit. This data doesn't actually look super linear, but we're going to go with it. So let's look at this first question. It says, over the period 0 to 4, the average rate of change of government funding for the arts was less than, greater than, approximately equal to the rate predicted by the regression line. Okay, so the, re the rate predicted by the regress uh, regression line, they're asking us about the slope of that red line. And when they're asking us about the average rate of change, they're asking us about the slope of the line between the two points. So in a sense, they're asking us for the slope of the secant line connecting those two points. So if we're looking between 0 and 4, so here's 0 and here's 4. So if I compare the line between these two points and the red line, those two lines look like they have about the same steepness. They have about the same slope. So I would say that these are approximately equal. Let's look at the next one. In part B they're asking us to do the same basic thing but instead of going on the interval 0 to 4 we're supposed to look at the interval 4 to 8. So let's draw those two points in again. So here is 4 and here is 8. So 
we're comparing the slope of this purple line with the slope of the red line. So the purple line, this has negative slope. And the red line, this has positive slope. So the negative slope is going to be less than that positive slope. So our average rate of change is less than that predicted by the regression line. One more. So this time, we're supposed to look at the interval 3 to 6. So let's once again plot those points. So here's 3, here's 6. Plot, draw this secant line in here. So this time, both the slopes are positive, but the red line isn't quite as steep as the purple line. So that means our average rate of change that's the purple line, and then we have the red line, that's the regression line, so we're looking at the slope of the regression line. This average rate of change here is actually bigger than the red line's slope. So we're going to say greater than, and that, again that's because the purple line is way steeper than the red line. Okay, so let's do one last one. This time we're supposed to estimate estimate because they don't give us actual data. We have to um, guess off the graph. The average rate of change over the period 0 to 8. So if we're looking for an average rate of change, we're always looking for a slope. So here's 0, over here's 8. So our two points are 0, 1.25, and 8, 1.2. So if we calculate that average rate of change, that's going to be 1.2 minus 1.25, so that's going to be negative 0 0.05 over 8. So that is going to be equal to negative 0 0.00625. So how does this compare with the slope of the regression line? Okay, so well we can p compute the slope of the regression line, but we actually don't need to compute it because we can actually look at the slope of the line between those two points and compare without actually calculating the slope of that red line. We know this slope here is negative, this one is positive, the average rate of change is smaller than the slope of the regression line. So let's write the interpretation sentence. We're going to use that four part format. So it says over the period 0 to 8, so that's between 1995 and 2003. Okay. Next is the what, so we're looking at the total annual support for the arts. Next we're looking at whether it's increasing or decreasing. Since our slope is negative, it's decreasing at an average rate of, so here we have .00625 billion dollars. Okay, we don't usually say that in language, we wouldn't say .00625, so let's multiply this by one billion dollars. And if we do that, we can see that we have six million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So we could just say six million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year. And the reason again why I changed those units, why I rewrote that number in a different format is because in our, the way we talk we wouldn't ever say .00625 billion dollars. We would say six million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or you could say six point two five million dollars. So that's it for this video. There's going to be another one on this topic where we use the calculator to find the average rate of change given a function.